Okay, so what we're doing is flattening out the ruffles so that they all go the same direction because if you cut this without the ruffles being flat, then you're going to have some incorrect cuts on the side when you're doing your side seams for the skirt. This takes a while. So we're doing one side at a time. This side's already done. And yes, it's on the floor. Unless we were in my quilt shop right now, we don't have a cutting table large enough to lay this entire thing out. Okay, here we have cut out a quarter of a circle. Um, Lisa Marie's waist is 31 inches and mine is 35, so cut that in half and then you cut out your quarter circle. So for hers, we cut out a 15.5 inch quarter circle and for mine, we'll do a 17.5 inch quarter circle. And what we did is, help me real quick. We laid the measuring tape kind of angle it ourselves. She held it in place and then I cut very gently um, folding down the ruffles as I went as necessary um, to make sure that we didn't nick anything in the wrong place. So on the first skirt, we did not realize that it is imperative that you measure the edge. That's what Lisa Marie is doing right now. Um, you need to me measure both edges as well as, Lisa, do you want to show where the 25 inch in the center is, like starting from the center of here? So we didn't realize that you honestly should measure both sections, all three sections. So we're going to be ending up with T-length ruffle skirts <laughs> instead of full length because we had to basically recut, but that's okay. I'm actually glad we made that mistake because then it's a tip that I can offer on the video that I would not have otherwise known to say, hey, cut all three places. And the tutorial that we're using online, it does not say anything about doing that. Um, I think it assumes that you know that, and if I've never worked with ruffle fabric before, which I have not, then you wouldn't know it. So now that we know um, exactly where the curve needs to start, hit in the middle, and hit on the end, then we'll have all three sides as well as the bottom measuring the same uh, distance. So what we've done is we've laid the first cut on top of the second piece that I can trace out the cut because that will make it so much easier on both Lisa Marie and I. You can't really probably tell, but here's where it is right there. That's where that one curve. Okay, so there is the finished piece cut out, both of them laying one on top of the other. I think we're pretty proud of ourselves. The second one looks much uh, smoother on the cut because we were using one side to trace the other side not the measuring tape and it was it went a lot smoother one thing that we did was Lisa pulled back the ruffles a little bit as I was cutting the edge and that seemed to also help um, well she she pulled back the uh, the ones that were cut on the top layer so that when we cut the second layer it was a lot easier hope that makes sense So if you can hear, there's background noise. This is our Christmas celebration. I'm pinning the two layers of the skirt together. One layer looks like this, and the other layer looks like that when you pull out the ruffle, but you really need to do that. If you look here, I've got these pinned very neatly, and you've got the ruffle pulled out there, and you can see the selvage here. But if you don't pull that out and make it straight, it's... Liam wants fudge in a minute, baby. 
if you don't pull it out like this and pin it straight, then this is going to get bunched up inside your seam and you really don't want to do that because then the ruffle's not going to lay properly and you really want your ruffles to lay right once you get the entire skirt done. So I know it may seem self-explanatory, but that's why I'm showing this because see if I, if I just hide, tuck and hide that in there somehow when I'm pinning, it is going to get bunched up. You can see that that does not lay flat and this one does lay flat. Okay, so we've got this on the machine. I have mine set to 3.0. You can probably hear Spider-Man in the background. I don't know why that zoomed in because my, com my camera has a mind of its own. Hey, Christopher, can you say hi? Can you make the Hulk face? Tomorrow? All right, so that's my sewing buddy. Um, so I'm going to sew one seam first and see how it goes. That way, if there are any things I run, anything I run into um, to give Lisa tips, then I can, I can tell her that. So you can see the overlock stitch here that's done. Um, I just did this one here on my machine uh, because it gives me the straight edge along with the zigzag on it. And I did it twice. So we're going to do the waistband now and I um, put the elastic around my waist until I felt like it was snug. You don't want it too loose because it's got to hold the weight of the ruffles. And I wanted to point something out before I start pinning. Because of the way you cut these skirts, you're going to have these pieces on your waistband. I would not recommend that you let them fall outside the pinning. I would recommend that you very carefully keep them at the top of your waistband so that when you pin um, the elastic then you're going to catch this in there and I'll show you an example as soon as I start pinning. Okay, so I'm starting to pin this together. I've got my elastic already sewn together with the overlock stitch and you can hear my family in the background. This is my side seam and I am matching that up with the side seam on the elastic and what I was showing you earlier I have snagged the ruffle so that I can pin that in place so it doesn't fall down because then you would have a raw edge falling. I would recommend that you mark the half point on the other side of your elastic and what Lisa and I did was pin that to the other side seam. Otherwise, you're not going to know how far to stretch and pin your elastic as you go. Kind of like when you gather. It's easier to gather in four sections or six sections than all the sec all one section. You won't know how to stretch 